definitely would like to move on to making, uh, to just becoming better songwriters and, uh, and above all that, you know, become stronger Christians. Just like that will reflect our songwriting anyway. Thanks, guys. You might stand up for us. Okay, he has two questions. How did I come to know Brennan Manning and do I still owe him $30? Um, yes, I do still owe him $30. Um, Beaker, who co-writes a lot with me, he was a, he had heard Brennan speak at a uh, youth workers conference and uh, he got, he bought some tapes and actually paid for them and played them for me and um, that was my introduction to him. Okay, his question was, having just moved to a reservation, how do I deal with the fact that most Native American beliefs are in conflict with Christianity? Same way I dealt with living in Middle America. I think most Middle American beliefs are in direct conflict with the scriptures. That we live in the world, you know, we're in it but not of it. And it's uh, kind of fun to be there because we recognize the differences there, we don't recognize them so much in suburbia. <laughs> Yes. Well, I think that's fine. Uh, he asked what my response to Unashamed, doing a punk cover of Awesome God. Um, once again, I kind of go, it's, I think, you know, that's, it's a way of, I mean, I, I feel very honored by that, I suppose. I mean, knowing that anybody wants to sing your song is kind of, it's kind of a big surprise. <laughs> yes? How has God used you on the Navajo Reservation? Her question is, how has God used me on the Navajo Reservation? Well, um, I'm not a big believer in God using people that much. I, I think uh, that uh, what God has done in my life since I've been on the Navajo Reservation is he's made me more um, aware of of how quirky middle Americans are and all people are and um, of how uh, when I was in Thailand I met this missionary and I was talking about you know I said you know I just really want the Lord to use me and she said well forget it you know God doesn't need you for anything uh, God doesn't want to use you he wants you to love him and so that's really what I'm trying to do there I think more than anything else is is uh, is learn how to love him and I think I would do that if I was still in Kansas, you know, that, and that's sort of a lifelong process. One of the cool things, you know, as my dad got older was watching how God continued to work in his life and continued to bring him into a, a you know, a, a deeper walk with the Lord. So, yeah, I'm not a big, I mean, a lot of people want to make a big deal about going to the reservation. I, I think it's um, sort of missing a lot because I... It was sort of for my own salvation that I went, not to save anybody else. She wanted to know how the Ragamuffin Band was formed and how it's evolved to this point. Well, I met uh, Ricky Elias in Guatemala, actually, and, and I really liked him. And I'm kind of a big fan of Rick's. Actually, what the Ragamuffin Band is, is it's a collection of people who I would be in their fan club, except that I got to know them, and now I get to play with them. And uh, Rick is the one that introduced me to Mark. And um, Mark has been in a number of other bands, and, and uh, you're probably familiar with a lot of work that you don't know is his. Um, but, I mean, the first year or so that we traveled, we hardly talked. Because um, one great way that you can learn to get along with people is just to stay out of their hair. And uh, it's only been in the last little while that Mark and I have really started becoming, you know, hanging out more. And, and uh, I mean, I'm kind of going, wow, what an amazing blessing to be on a stage with these guys. And Aaron Smith, um, I met Jimmy a few years ago because he went on tour with us. And uh, he knows Aaron from way back. So it was sort of a, a, a group of guys whose work I really admire. And, um, that, you know, we kind of, I think we enjoy playing together. And uh, 
it, it's it's always kind of in a state of flux. Um, it started out there were a lot more people involved than there are now, but just a lot of times people get you know family kind of responsibilities and. Um, you know, they're just in places where they can't travel as much. I want to hear this too. Okay. <laughs> how, how is working with Rich different oh, from... you repeat the question? Yes, how is working with Rich different from working with 77s? Well, um, musically it's different. Um, my contribution is a little different in as such, uh, I don't know, it's hard to put into words. Uh, my relationship with the 77s was a lot different and I kind of went through a lot of uh, heartbreak situations with them, you know, and, and um, I haven't experienced much heartbreak with Rich yet. <laughs> uh, but uh, musically, it's... I think being in the 77s uh, was an easy transition to Rich's music. It's a little more cut back, and which I was I was more than glad to do. You know, play a, play a simpler part in in a, in a body of music and just play for the music rather than you know you know you get a a, a band kind of atti attitude and and feeling towards what whatever you do. And we had a certain heard, had a certain vibe we were going for, you know, and so um, with Rich, that's that's non-existent, you know, it's just playing the music and, and letting the music minister to the people who hear it, it's, if that makes any sense. Rich, you've been doing Christian music for quite some time, um, did you see any changes, differences in the Christian music industry from when you started? Does he ask if I saw any changes in Christian music since when I started? Yes. Um, it's. I think more and more uh, people think there's something to it, which is, uh, I think, the bad side, the downside. When I, when, you know, years ago, Christian music was a novelty, and people thought, it, and they were just kind of thrilled that there was, that it was, there was such a thing. Now people expect Christian musicians to be to take the place of pastors and stuff and to be instructing kids on in how to live and all that. And I kind of go, whereas I hope that our music might be instructive, I, I still don't think that it's, that the responsibility of doing church work should be on the shoulders of the Christian music industry. Christian music industry is a capitalistic endeavor, period. And if anyone is interested in spiritual vitality, they need to invest themselves in the church, not in an industry. And I think the attitude has just gotten more deeply ingrained in people. That's why you have a bunch of Christian musicians saying a bunch of religious stuff that they don't really mean, because you guys demand it of them, and they're dumb enough to play along. know how basically how we select songs for the album we're, we're in the process we begin to well, first of all I don't think God really cares what we put on our album um, I think he's got more important things to worry about than that um, I think that what God cares about is that we be holy and I think that if we are attempting to be holy that will govern every every decision we have to make I think basically you get down to an album and you say we've got 10 shots at saying something to people. What 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 are the what are 10 things that we really want to say? Which is why um, there are a lot of songs that we really like that we just don't record because you kind of go, yeah, I really like that, but does everybody need to hear that? So I mean, I think song selection has a lot to do with um, you know what 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 would be the most edifying for somebody? What if somebody buys this album, can, what can we say here that would encourage them or that would challenge them or would uh, 
you know, comfort them maybe, those kinds of things. Let them know that they're not alone, that sort of thing. I think um, an awful lot of evangelical Christians are so unthinking that they don't even know what I'm talking about. Wait till I start talking about my theological beliefs. That's really going to screw everybody up. Peacock and in, in the band um, Vector. Right. And also does artwork in uh, Release Magazine. So, and, and in fact, I think a lot of people know his paintings but don't know that he's a musician. A lot of people know he's a musician but don't know he's a painter. So, I do a lot of illustration work, a lot of photo collage related. Rich's Brothers Keeper record, I did that. So, I'm in kind of hands on in lots of different areas. My name is Aaron Smith, and I'm the drummer. And yes, most of the time. And with Mark's help, you know, I, I uh, construct a groove of sorts. <laughs> I'm Mark. I play bass. Hi. <laughs> I'm Rick Elias, and I'm um, the other guitar player. <laughs> He's also the only person in the band that wears sunglasses. All day. All day. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, having been covered by Christian media a few times, one of the things that, that I hope you all understand is that people really read the stuff you write. And sometimes I think as a musician, it's good for me to have people challenge me to, to, to really think about what I'm trying to say. The thing that is sometimes alarming to me about Christian media is I kind of go, it's almost like reading, reading some of the magazines that, that have articles about me. I kind of go, it's, it's like reading People magazine. It's like reading any other kind of garbage. It just has a Christian name on it. And I hope that, that in that you have the opportunity to write something that people are going to read, I hope you, you, you can start thinking maybe about writing more stuff that, that has something to do with something. It's, um, you know, always, um, that's always a challenge because it's always a little bit scary because if you, if you say something meaningful, you're very likely to turn people off. And let's face it, we all have to sell product. But I, I would just like to encourage you to realize also that at some point there ain't going to be no more product to sell. That someday we're all going to be dead and the amount of product we sold is not going to be all that important. But what may be important is, is the idea that you might be able to challenge someone to think outside the lines of conventional evangelical Christianity. You might be able to challenge someone and encourage them and realizing that maybe God is bigger than the, uh, the conventions of middle class American uh, churchianity or whatever that is. And I'd really like to encourage you all to do that and to not be afraid of it. Um, I just, I, I think that a lot of people are maybe just a little afraid and, and I, I just like to tell you what angels say to people when they meet them, they say don't be afraid, that what you have to say, you need to say it not because it's right. <laughs> 